Hey everyone, happy August. I'm so thrilled to be back again. I absolutely love this hour of the month. And who knew that Wellness Month was a thing? Candidly, I didn't. I did know that the last six months have been absolutely um, crazy. Uh, you know, unprecedented is a word that we're using not only to describe the pandemic and what's occurred in our in our you know sort of personal lives and culturally across the country, um, but also business. Business is um, you know running at unprecedented levels, and we're all just trying to figure it out. And we thought it so fitting during a month focused on wellness in a year that wellness really should be such a priority for all of us that we bring in a dynamic amazing woman to speak to all of us about self-care wellness and importantly how focusing on that can help our businesses it can help all of our relationships and it certainly can help all of us so I am thrilled today to have with us Delia Posse, the founder and chief mission officer of the Women's Choice Award. So we're gonna have a conversation today focused on well-being, on self-care, on stress management, and how all of that can play into furthering your businesses and just helping you find a little bit more sanity in all of this. As a reminder, we are recording today's event and please remember to post comments and questions in the chat box and we will circle back and get to those at the end. So thanks so much for taking time out of your day to put you first today and every day. Hopefully you'll take some things away from this that you can put into practice. I know that Dealey is looking to share some true tangible things with all of us today. So without further ado, let me welcome Delia Posse. Hi, Sue. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be with you today. Thank you for having me. So happy to have you back. So many people uh, may recall that you joined us at our first and ultimately only live event this year in Chicago. And, um, you know, such amazing feedback. It was so amazing to have you there. And, and before we dive in today, can you and maybe you'll be doing it a little bit later, but you know, there's a lot of, your background is pretty amazing. You were a, a publisher of two magazines, correct? Working Mother Magazine and Working Woman. So <clears throat> talk about stress and work-life balance. I lived it being a single mom of three girls at the time while I was group publisher, so yeah. Yeah, and there you know, you know all about that. You know all about the you know reaching the female consumer, but also um, working with women just on their business and growth and sales focus, et cetera. I mean, really a deep understanding of what our audience, what their life is like, right? Absolutely, I dedicated my life to empowering women to be successful, and you know I've had the the opportunity um, through the years to speak to a lot of realtor associations. Uh, just to help them get in the mindset of what success could look like and what can stop you from reaching your goals and how to you know tear down those barriers. So um, stress is definitely something that's going to chip away at our success if we don't turn it around. So today is going to be very exciting for us. That's wonderful. And um, we all live with stress. I think the important thing is to learn how to manage it and live within it because it's 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 not going anywhere. It may be heightened now, but there's always some form of that in our lives. And, and I know as women, and I love that you focus so much on empowering women in your career. And as women, we tend to kind of put ourselves last quite often. You and I have talked about, we tend to be the default parent. Know how, you know, even, even if we have an amazing spouse who's in the picture with us, a lot still falls on us, both inside and outside of the office, caregiving for parents, you know, siblings, everything. So it's uh, whether it's work related or personal, stress follows us. Absolutely. You know, as women, we tend to take on the emotional burdens as well, even though we know the kids are being taken care of or maybe dad's running in our We're still we can't let go the way that uh, men tend to um, really separate a lot of the challenges they they're able to kind of put it in this bucket in that bucket we're just a mishmash and those emotions tend to override a lot of the wellness techniques that you know we should be implementing so we'll talk a little bit about that today as well but women we carry a lot more of the burden and so 
naturally uh, stress is uh, part of our lives. Absolutely it is. Well, without taking any more time, because I know the audience is um, dying to hear from you and, and learn from you, we will circle back for some Q&A at the end, but I know you have a great way to kick us off today as well. So with that, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Well, again, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I speak from the heart. I speak from experience. Um, you know, we're in a really tough time. I don't know. I was talking to a leading gynecologist the other day, and he said to me, um, something is wrong. Like something's really off. There's like this kind of uh, cloud over our world. And I'm seeing it with my patients. I'm seeing it in my personal life. He goes, you know, I, I don't know what it is. He said, but I can't wait for this year to go by. And I think we probably all in some way share that feeling, right? Like this is overwhelming. Um, you know, today in lots of parts of the country, I guess the South and so forth, you know, school started today. So a lot of these working mothers out there probably shaking your head going, oh my God, and the virtual learning and trying to manage all of this. And it does fall on the shoulders of women. So we are, um, we're in for a, a ride for sure. And so I wanna help you get through this period because this is not an easy time in our lives. I mean, we have to understand it and embrace it that this too shall pass but we need coping skills. Otherwise, you know, um, so many things will just crumble and the success of our business will suffer and our lives, our health, our family. So today is so appropriate. This month, the wellness month is really important. And um, I'm gonna share before we get into a little fun exercise I wanna do with you, um, what's happened to me in the last couple of weeks, because I think when people understand it's in every family and every life, um, you know, I, in my little preview uh, that you received about who I am and that I'm a breast cancer survivor and I, I left publishing when I was diagnosed to, to build a, a company about empowering women. And it was a very tough time for me because I was the breadwinner and yet I, I was dealing with cancer as well as trying to build a company. I thought that was a, a very stressful time in my life, and it was, but um, I get the call from Caldwell Banker, you know, to, to do this, and I'm like, cool, I can talk about work-life balance and stress and all. And then um, a week later, um, my daughter, uh, who is 32 years old, uh, married for uh, seven years, comes to me and says, I'm getting a divorce. Um, it turned ugly, like overnight. My granddaughter disappeared with my son-in-law. We couldn't find her. We had the police everywhere. Um, we And then my, my mother, who's 82, couldn't handle the stress of knowing that one of her grandkids, her great-granddaughter, was missing. So she had a heart attack on me. And um, so we're dealing with my daughter falling apart. Um, you know, with all of that, I'm dealing with now my mother's in the hospital. We don't know if she's going to make it. And we're extremely close as a family. So... When I was asked to, to do this, I'm thinking, hey, you know what, um, how am I surviving this? Like this was really, really difficult. And what I was mentioning to Sue, what, and to be honest, there were times where I didn't know if I can get up, like, you know, you just go, oh my God, let me go, go to sleep. Hopefully it'll be a nightmare. Of course I didn't sleep, right? You can't sleep when all these things are happening. And you just hope that the hour you get that night, you wake up and the nightmare is gone. And so it gives you a sense of where I'm coming from when I tell you that, you know, there are ways to manage it and there are things we have to, we really have to process. So one of the things that I learned during this period so that I could handle my stress better is how to breathe. Something super simple, but um, about two years ago, I went to a cardiologist because I was getting palpitations and some of it was stress related. And I also got a meditation coach um, two weeks ago and just to help me get through this. And here's a simple technique. So I hope you'll do it with me because it's really helped me get through the day. And I think we all need that. So I'd like you to just take a moment. Um, just close your eyes with me for a minute. This is not going to take very long. And it's called the box breathing method. And you can look it up after because you want to share it with people that you love. And um, it's four seconds of breathing in, four seconds of holding your breath in, four seconds of releasing the air, and then four seconds of just allowing your body to 
be in that state where there's no nowhere in your lungs. So we're going to do this together. But before we do it, I just want you to take a second, close your eyes and try to clear your mind for a minute because you know what? We right now we're okay. Right now in this very place we are, the kids are okay, the family's okay, your business is okay. You're on today because you want to be a better person. You're okay. So let's take a deep breath and then let's breathe in. Now breathe in with your stomach, right? Not from your chest. So breathe in through your nose and then hold it for four seconds. So breathe one, two, three, four. Release slowly. One, two, three, four. And then relax. No breath. One, two, three, four. Now let's do it one more time. Close your eyes, be still, be comfortable, be relaxed, you're in a good place. And let's do it one more time. Breathe in, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Breathe out, one, two, three, four. And now relax without air. One, two, three, four. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Now open your eyes. Okay. If you do this just five minutes a day, your blood pressure will go down. You'll be able to refocus your brain. And you can get through times where you think you're just overwhelmed. So sharing this little activity with you. And now let's get into our presentation. What is stress and what's stress management? It's a problem, problem solving, solving and time management skill. It's when you learn how to cope with adversity and learning how to deal with personal relationships and taking these relaxation techniques and learning more so that these skills can turn a stressful situation into a positive opportunity for growth and betterment. So you need to think about that stress is what keeps us going, right? It's, it's, it's very important to understand our stressors, but we also have to gain control over them. Otherwise they create havoc in our lives. So for most, most people, they say work is probably the greatest stressor of all. Um, and it's doing the time balancing act, you know, act, which is, um, I'll talk about in a second, which can create even more stress. So you need to, maybe even if you have a piece of paper, maybe you might even want to identify what your greatest stressors are right now, because we need to tackle them. So if you have a problem that hasn't been solved um, or you're really challenged with it, it's best to take a step back, all right? You're constantly working, adjusting, testing, and being in that kind of state of mindset all day long holds you back from pinpointing the areas that are causing you the stress and how to best tackle them. So maybe the first step is to identify what's causing your stress. You are who your, your stresses are your own. Only you could identify how to deal effectively with them. We're all so different. What, what triggers positive and negative for me is very different than you. So even as you identify what's causing you stress, do you know that just identifying what is causing you stress right now could help alleviate some of it? Just, just processing those could be so important. Self-awareness, all right? Understanding that, you know, there's so when people go, oh, just go do this and breathe and take a walk and stuff. And you're like, I don't know, nothing seems to be helping. It's not because you know, you're not doing it right. It's just that you need to work it out in your own way. And I'm going to give you lots of different ideas on how to do that. But it's a very particular part of the triggers of anxieties that happen to you personally, but how you tackle it um, is going to be very important. And over time, you can work on changing your responses to those stressors. So one of the things that I've been learning is what does my body do when I get in that high alert and that stress situation? How do I tackle it? How can I handle it? For me, sometimes I have to process the worst case scenario. So if I don't get that project done by five o'clock today, what's going to happen? Okay. And then I back into it. And if it's disappointing a client, 
then I'll take a pre, uh, I'll be pre-active or what's the word, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go preempted in a sense by writing an email at three o'clock and saying, hey, I so apologize, something came up, uh, I'm not able to get that to you uh, by five, but I promise to have it to you by 10. So now I've reduced some of that anxiety over disappointing somebody. Um, and usually people are very understanding and they'll get back to you or they may say, hey, I don't need the whole presentation, but could I have these two slides? Something that you could work to together. So think about what is causing you the greatest amount of stress and then how can you create responses that will make everyone more comfortable and mostly yourself. Um, the other thing you're going to hear a lot is mindfulness. Um, that's something that I've been reading a lot about. Um, it's when you're doing, so for example, when you do that breathing technique, you're supposed to think of a very happy moment in your life. Think of like the most, the happiest where you have felt pure joy. And um, it could be, I'm thinking of myself sitting on a beach when I was in my 30s and I've, I've never felt so at peace and calm. And you're supposed to remember the smells and the feelings you experience while you're doing that deep breathing. So body sensations, thoughts, behaviors, smells, all of that when you're going through that de-stressing period, those, those breathing, it really does help. Um, and then the, bra the brain actually activates the serotonin and all these good response mechanisms to help you feel better. So no matter what the stress is, how we respond to the stress is really the critical point about your success, okay, as you take that forward. Um, I want to address the work-life balance because so many of you are working moms uh, and uh, I think we have a real challenge with this whole concept of balance. By the way, there is no such thing. There is no such thing as balance. Anybody who says that drives me insane. Think of our lives as a scale, all right? And sometimes that scale is gonna be focused a lot more on work than it is on your family. Your family, you're gonna have to juggle how that's gonna work. What I went through the last couple of weeks, seeing my daughter be her life being destroyed, my mother being ill, um, work was on the bottom of that scale and my family rose to the top. And that was my balance for the last two weeks. So um, it is, it is, that is life. So anyone who, who says to you, you need to balance better or you need to just close your ears because you know that that's not real and don't ever, ever feel guilt. When I was a working mother, um, I felt terrible guilt that I was running a big publishing company in New York. I lived an hour away. My kids were being raised by nannies. Um, I was a single mom at the time. And I lived with that in, a, in, in so many ways, um, but I kept on justifying I'm giving my kids a good life and great schools and quality weekends. And at the end of the day, my girls, all they talk about is what an amazing childhood they had and how much love they had. And all they remember was the quality that we spent when we did spend it together. So don't be hard on yourself because you're gonna realize that at the end, you're doing everything you can to be the best parent and provider. So work-life balance is a very fluid part of your life. Um, it's like making a loan payment, right? It's sometimes you spend more, sometimes you have money coming in more, sometimes you have money going out more. That's how you gotta think about you know, work-life balance as well. Uh, there's, there's little that you can do to, um, there's little that um, you can do to really uh, adjust unless you start to think about uh, how you can process what your brain needs to do. So let's think about some certain things, simple things you can do that have helped me through the years. Uh, I wrote a list of all the things that, I've, that have really gotten me through and helped me succeed. So the first thing is I have to have a schedule. I don't know about you, but I live by my outlook. And the night before I spend my time before the day's end, and then again at night, I spend time going over my schedule. So there's no surprises the next day, 
all right? And things that go in your schedule, doctor's appointments, going for a walk, going to Pilates class, whatever it is. And by the way, I laugh at that. I have not been to an exercise class, but I have to say I've been getting up at 6.30 every day and I go to a pool now. So um, you need to think about scheduling everything. Uh, I like to plan my day the night before. Some people like to get up and plan their day in the morning, whatever works for you. But one thing I do do is I highlight my priorities and I focus on the ones that are going to get, bring me closest to my goals. So, you know, if you have a goal of, I'm going to bring in two more clients this month, you got to think that that is your goal. So every day you want to get up and go, how much closer am I to that goal? Because when you don't meet that goal, you, that stress, right? So you want to be clear about your top priorities and keep yourself and your mind focused on marketing your business and selling. You know, sometimes it's easy. I bet you could agree with me. Sometimes it's easy to um, to get caught up in the stuff that you that that is painless, right? So somebody wants to go over with you something um, that is, you know, like a new idea or a new whatever, and you go to lunch and you're having coffee and you're like, yeah, this is kind of my list of, because the real work, the real hard work, like marketing your business and taking care of all the things you need to, um, to grow and meet your sales goals, that's the tougher stuff, right? So don't go off focus because those are that's the easiest, easier part of your day. Think about, I need to stay focused. I need to spend my time wisely. So don't spend it on administration. Think about your goals and you will have less stress when the money's coming in, when you're, when you're feeling really confident in the success you're having. Um, so don't let things get away from you. It is the easiest thing to happen, and I think we're all guilty of that. Um, and then the other thing I, I do is I'm really good now at asking for help. I wasn't very good at it in my 30s, but then as I got into my 40s and now my 50s, you know, getting help is really what my go-to thing. It's like, who can I help me do this? And I find support system, I find people I hire when I need to, but I do get help and I, I'm not afraid to ask people, can you help me? Um, I also think that that goes outside of your business to your support. So I'm always thinking about my support network. As I get older, I valued more the friends who became more my support network. And I have to tell you, I have seen friendships come together for me in the last two weeks in a way that, you know, makes me want to cry because um, these are people who pick you up when you're down and get you through. Um, and it's also just things like, you know, can you help me? Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have enough leads or whatever. Maybe there's something that they can help you uh, think about how to help you grow your business. So that's, a big part of, of using that network. Um, I also found, like I said to you, getting up early and I started swimming. I used to go for walks, but it's just too hot now. I live in Florida. So it's like, think of getting up a little earlier for me time. And then I will talk to you a little bit about wellness. Um, I, I like to write. I'm not big at writing, but I started doing this. I write everything down that my mind is being processing. One thing I've noticed is I'm having a harder time sleeping at night. So in order for me to actually sleep, I find that I have to write down my challenges, my problems, my stressors, and then I write down next to possible solutions. So this way I'm able to go, you know, all right, I could put this aside now and now I can relax and now I could sleep because the brain doesn't have to process like on a, 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 on a broken record, just processing the same thing because my thoughts are in a safe place and I don't have to worry about my business or the family or the children because I know everything is going to be there when I wake up in the morning and I don't have to worry about forgetting anything. I don't know about you, but I'm at this point where I'm always worried about forgetting things. So my brain doesn't, and you know, people have said, if you don't have a piece of paper by you, one idea is like to take anything that's on your nightstand and put it on the floor because then it triggers, like I'll, I'll just, toss a book and I'll put it on the floor if I don't have my pad with me or if I wake up two o'clock in the morning with a, with a thought, I know I'll forget in the morning, I put the book on the floor, it actually triggers um, why you had the book on the floor and you don't you don't forget. So um, it's, uh, it's a good way um, uh, to get through the night. 
And I always say, if everything else fails, go for a massage. I have found that massage therapy is a wonderful way to get you back on track. So think about, you know, really um, just pampering yourself a little. I know it's hard now with the pandemic. Maybe you can get your husband or your one of your kids. I, I mean, I, I pay my little granddaughter to comb my hair now. I say, I'll give you a quarter. I'll take you out to buy a Barbie. And she sits there and just combs my hair. The hair therapy is amazing. The other thing is, is that I've also found a great way to relieve stress and also to boost my success as a gratitude journal. Now, I started with this, which is every night I think about what I'm grateful for. In the worst possible times, I'm always going to sleep at night thinking about what I'm grateful for. And they call it a gratitude journal. I have found that as time progressed, I got a little lazy. I really don't like to sit there and write all the things, but I cannot go to sleep. I've conditioned myself for the last year. I cannot go to sleep without counting all the things I'm grateful for that day. And when I do that, I feel so much more connected with myself, which is the opposite of what stress does. Stress stress disconnects you from your inner soul, your spirit. It just takes away, it eats at you. So being grateful is a great way to counter that stress. So that's um, something that I found I can never live without. Um, some people say, and you know, I asked a lot of my colleagues, we're all my, you know, friends of Commissioner of Miami. I'm, you know, my other friend is a CEO of a big corporation, and I, I spent some time over the weekend asking them. And, you know, they're saying that, you know, it's just sometimes you need to just take that break during the day. Um, just take a mental break, go for a walk, take a little cat nap, especially now we're home, right? So it takes, if you need to just go lay down for 10 minutes. Um, I also found that disconnecting a little earlier. So now I have, I started looking forward to Fridays because I've, I've done this thing where I don't schedule calls on Friday from three o'clock on. So it allows me to use that time as I see fit. If I need to finish something, then I got to get it off my plate before the weekend. But if, I, if I'm free and I can get everything done, hey, I'm free. I can read a book, I can spend time with kids, do whatever I want. Um, one of the biggest things that I did to really help change things is to think about my health um, as far as internal. And that came from when I was a breast cancer survivor. So eating better has been a huge part of my life. Um, stress, eats at you. It'll kill you. It'll take away from the quality of your life. You'll die earlier from it. So if you not, if you don't just think about the ways to reduce stress, but internally you fuel your immune system with the right things like, you know, beans and apples and plums and berries and walnuts and broccoli and artichokes and all the things that reduce stress, you are being good to yourself inside and out. So now I know I have, I'm running out of time, but I'm going to talk, I want to talk to you about how you turn stress around. How do you use stress for success? So let's talk a little bit about what you do. Stress is natural. It's what actually gets that competitive spirit going and what makes you want to go out there and, and, you know, I can do it. I can do it. It is a natural, normal, very healthy way of being successful is using stress. So let's recognize um, the first thing is what's going well. All right. These are probably one of the most important things that I tell people when I talk to them that they seem down or they're having what's going well. It's kind of that gratitude thing. But during the day, think about your business now. Think about what's going right on your business. And that puts you in a positive mindset. Focusing on the good things about your business also keeps your mind in the present right here. And when you're bright and when you're stressed, your brain tells you that you have to stay vigilant. OK, so when you're stressed, you're at attention and you have to stay vigilant. And that's actually a really, really good thing for business because it's when you get a little lazy and a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more comfortable that you're gonna see your business slide a little bit, right? So staying vigilant in business is important and that is a stressor actually, but that's a positive stressor. So let's think about how we think about stress in a positive way. Um, we also want to plan like a lot more. Um, we want to have more confidence in who we are. So one of the things that I always talk about is um, not only, like I said earlier, having a good uh, um, schedule because that's really important, but know you know when you need to physically take that little break, like maybe it's 3 p.m. I know me, I need to go and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and a cookie at 3 o'clock. 
I need that, whatever it is. Um, and I try the Belvita and the, the more health, healthy cookies, but I need something. It's like a mental thing with me. I need to just take that break at three o'clock because I'm, I'll start seeing my, you know, cortisol levels go down. And so that's what helps pick me up. Prioritize your time. You need the me time. Don't forget the me time. So when you're getting caught, that's why I talked about that Friday, three o'clock. You know, this is really important because also when you take that me time, you could think, don't you find like stress doesn't allow you to think and get creative? The other thing I want to talk about is being strong in communication. When to say no. You might be like most women who hate to say no when we're, we're tasked will, you know, but, but there's so much positive into saying no, because that'll allow to free you up to focus on what's important to you. But there's something else. It's, you will also help them. Because when you say no, you're empowering that person, you're giving them an opportunity to show them that they can do it that you really value what they do and that you they can do it on their own terms. Maybe you could help them figure out how to get it done, but or maybe just say, look, I can't get it done now, but I could I can consider getting doing this next week. So knowing when to say no is really, really important for um, uh, for taking that stress and turning it positive, right? Because now you're feeling overwhelmed and now you go, I'm going to say no, I'm going to empower somebody else to get that done. And, um, and then the other thing that we talked about um, is stay focused on your business, okay? So sometimes we wanna do everything, right? We, we wanna go after this idea and this idea and this idea, th that idea, and we're filled with so many ideas. Think about how much business you will lose if you are scattered in opportunity. Think about where you're going to make the most money, where you are going to succeed, and focus on that, laser focus. So when all these ideas and people pulling at you, and what if we did this and what if we did that, guess what, you can say no. And you can get right back to focusing on how you're going to reach your goal. Um, it will, it, by saying no to too many opportunities will allow you to focus on the core opportunity and your return returns will, will, you'll see real returns over time. That was a hard lesson I had to learn, but when I did, my profits went up. Um, so let's, let's stay positive. Let's turn the, the stress into positive. I think I gave you a couple of those things. Um, and don't be afraid to leave things undone. Okay. Don't be afraid. Like right now, my bed has an unmade bed that needs to be changed tonight. I'm not, I'm not going to sweat over that. Right. Um, I, I can say no with confidence. I will schedule time for myself. Um, I'll switch off when I need to, to regrow and also to think so I can be creative in my business. Um, I'm going to allow myself not to be attractive all the time. You, you should have asked Leah and Sue how, what I looked like last week when we did the run, the dry run, not like today, you know, my hair was actually done. So, um, don't feel guilty and, um, and don't be your worst enemy, be your best friend. Um, that's no one could help you do that better than you. So I hope you've taken some good ideas from me today and I'd love to help you. So please, uh, you know, Sue, I'll turn it back over to you if there's uh, if we'd like to talk to everyone a little bit about questions or ideas that they have. Absolutely. So thank you so much. And I just love you know, the, the realness and the reality. I, I can't imagine what you've been going through and carrying over the last several weeks. And, um, you know, my heart goes out to you and, and I, I'm, you know, impressed with the way in which you've, you've clearly implemented your own, you know, sort of, sort of uh, recommendations here because um, you never faltered in your delivery of your commitment to us. And so I, I, I applaud you for that. I thank you for that. And I, you know, I really, um, I, I can't imagine what you've been going through. And I think, you know, just being able to be that honest and transparent with the, the people on the phone, you know, everyone's always going through something and, and we tend to, you know, you said it um, today and I think we talked about it before, you know, your stressors are your stressors and, and there's no 
you know, no one person has it better or worse because it's what you're living through in that moment in time. And you come to that with everything you've gone through and you'll leave from it with some new coping mechanism or, or learning you're stronger than, than you thought. So, you know, um, it, it's just amazing and it's so relatable. Um, just the, the, you know, the, not all of it, but the, you know, your daughter and your mother and, and it's just, it's, it's crazy. And the, the no such thing as balance. I've said that for years and for a long time I've gotten crazy looks, right? Because I keep getting asked, how do you balance it? I said, I don't. Like, there's no such thing, right? I mean, I have days where this work is my priority, and I have days a lot more in the last six months, candidly, where my family was my priority. And, and um, you know, it, it, it's just been a journey, and I think it will continue to be a journey. So let's get to some of the questions um, that came in for sure. So this is an interesting one. Um, what's been the most surprising to you about the evolution of the working mom over the last decade? Um, how little we've progressed. Interesting. Okay, so when I took over, I was in my mid-30s um, when I took over Working Mother magazine. Um, and, uh, and I also then two years later was asked to be the group publisher and I took over working woman magazine as well. And I will never forget, um, they, I was ready to close working woman magazine because I wasn't getting support. And this is 1999. And I did a, a country tour meeting with IBM, Microsoft, AT&T, every big company you could imagine asking them to continue to support working women because we had so far to go. We had so far to go. And, um, and what I got in, in 1999 was, uh, oh, women don't have issues anymore. We don't have any issues in the workplace anymore. We are completely equal to men. Um, we don't have those same problems. That was, my mother had those issues in the 70s, not in the 90s. Well, let's fast forward. Um, we have fewer female CEOs than we did in 1999 in Fortune 500 companies. Um, at the time, 3% of all venture capital went to working women, and we are up to a whopping 7%. Um, the progress we've made is so disappointing. Um, and I will tell you, um, my friend, who sits on a very prominent board said to me that during this pandemic that around the board and a lot of men around that board table was questioning um, how working mothers are going to survive in corporate America now. And instead of hearing whatever it's going to take, we want to support them 100%, it's like a step back. Maybe they need to reconsider and have the husband go back and make the money and they stay home. And that was literally discussed around the table. That so is when, you, when you hear that, you just go, oh, my God. Like <laughs> You just want to go like scream, talk about stress. But how sad that we really have not made these leaps and bounds um you know uh that we you would think we had we could or we should yeah it's it's very interesting and it's it's part of the impetus of this entire series as you and i talked about because it's it's about ensuring that women understand how to take control. We did a great session on literally taking control of your career, owning that path, right? And you and I have talked offline about the fact, like when I was made the CEO of one of our brands, I didn't have the opportunity to go and say, you know, oh, but I'm not going to travel internationally or running, you know, Caldwell Banker as it, this part that I do. I don't get to say, well, I'm not going to go visit. There are trade-offs and you have to do things. And women have to do them just as men have had to do them. And you have to understand that as a woman going up into a career uh, that requires that type of thing. Not all careers do, but so many women listening right now are tremendous in their role. They are strong entrepreneurs leading um, great teams, individual businesses, you know, sitting in my seat may be completely unappealing to them because I do have the boardroom that I have to counter with or deal with to some extent, right? From the decisioning and et cetera. And I'm fortunate enough to live, to work with an organization that is 
actively thinking through how to make it more um, fluid and agile for women in these roles to continue to get their jobs done. But so many of the women that are listening are amazing business women and, and running strong businesses and just trying to figure out because they are entrepreneurs and they don't have perhaps you know, staff members they can turn things over to or an assistant that can help get it done, right? They're trying to do this balance. So, you know, when you look at at stress management, at women's health, you know, do you see a connection between taking the time for you? And I think you do, because we've talked about it, that mental and physical well-being correlating to a more successful career irregardless of where on the ladder or titling that career may be right so do you yeah. and do you see us having made progress at all in that realm as it relates to taking care of ourselves or have we just taken more on in our journey to take on larger roles you know it's such a personal thing um some of us listening have shaking their head and going, I'm just taking more on. And other people are going, no, it's gotten easier. I have a tremendous support system. I could afford now to have that support system. Or I just have friends that have been very supportive. So they reached out. They're not afraid to ask anymore. There's no stigma around it. And it's okay to ask and reach out. Um, I do think we have to think about ourselves as, um, you know, we need to be mentally and physically fit in order to be successful. You really have to think that way. If you're not, you need to make, you need to make your, um, you need to make your life uh, like you're running a marathon, like you're training for a marathon. You need to think about what am I gonna do every day that is going to make me the best person I could be. You need to mentally and physically, you know, really focus on winning winning in every part of your life. It's winning in your health. It's winning with your family. It's winning in your business. And that's a mental game. That's not, we don't wake up and go, you know, I'm all charged up. I mean, we have to psych ourselves. We have to talk about it. We have to feel good about it. And we have to have wins throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? It's what gets us charged up. We have to have wins. So, you know, you have to train. And if you're not in training every day, I'm sure we all need that couch potato day, you know, just watch movies and have ice cream. Sure, we need that. That is actually part of letting go. But most of the time, we don't have a choice because that's not going to get us to our goal. Yeah, it's, um, it, it is training. And it's because so many times we're asked these questions, what can I do? What are some tips? And we can provide, you can provide, I can share what I do. But the individual person has to own that and be very intentional about setting those boundaries, which is also something by and large women aren't great at doing, right? We're not amazing at setting boundaries, right? It's yes to everyone for everything. I loved your comment about saying no. You know, I think as a leader, we talk about that often, you know, is sometimes the, the most important thing you can do is say no to an idea because we do stretch ourselves too thin. And, and I, you know, you find that even with dealing with friends and family and whatnot. And I joke my social life went away because I started saying no to everything because I found it was much better for me to just be home, you know, right. on the days of home and not traveling. Right. So one of the things that came up here was this loss of time. Like it, it, somebody put it, the edges of the day, the commute, right or the 3 p.m. coffee break, the times when you can really just be alone. And, and we talked a little bit about this. Our, our routines are part of what ground us in normal and give us back some of me. You mentioned getting a massage. We can't get a massage. Many of us can't get our nails done. We can't do this. How would you, you know, suggest carving that time back for yourself? Is it calendaring it? Is it you know, um, having a direct conversation with a spouse or a colleague and saying, look, I'm, I'm carving out, that's it. And, and just holding yourself, is that that personal accountability? You know, it's funny. I Everyone always says schedule in your breaks. I've never been able to do it. I'm so, I fail miserably at it, you know. Um, I've just found that I need to find routines that make me feel good. Like the fact that I get up a half an hour early now to swim, I feel so refreshed after that, that I'm not gonna give that up. No one's ever encouraged me to, I found something. Like I found something that worked for me. When three o'clock comes, I don't care what, I, I tell people, look, I just gotta take a 10 minute break. I'm sorry, I'll be back in 10 minutes. And I just go, 
make myself that coffee, sit there, just look outside for a few minutes because now we all work from home. Look at, I go outside, I even walk my garden for 10 minutes and then I come back in. I need to, I just need that mental disconnect from everything for 10 minutes. You gotta find what works for you, but you gotta do it. You gotta do it. I, I have found that through this pandemic, we need to become more selfish on what it's gonna take to get us through this, you know? Because at the end of the day, when we become more our family wins, like our business wins, our family wins when we become more selfish about what's going to keep us mentally and physically, you know, happy. And and that's at the root of it, right? The self-awareness of what works for you and the fact that why, why don't we deserve to be happy in our pursuit of our business goals and our aspirations and you know, the, 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 the best leader, the best, the most successful people I know are happy. They're enjoying what they're doing and they yeah. have found the way to make it work for them and, and not trying to make it the way somebody else does. And so that's that self-awareness. And I, you know, it's, it's selfish, but it's, it gives back to everybody else. I know I'm a better mom when I'm happier. I know that I'm a better spouse, that I'm a better employee when I'm bal when I'm balanced in my acceptance of it's not balanced, but in my decision making, right? That I that I know that I'm comfortable maybe is the right word in what I'm doing and the time I'm giving to me. One of the questions that came in, which I thought is pretty interesting in here is, how do you feel about social media and do you think it ne negatively affects women's mental health or is it important for connection, especially given maybe today's environment, right? Um, I'm not, uh... I use social media for our business, right? The Women's Choice Award is out there on LinkedIn and social media, and we're touting brands, we're touting Caldwell Banker, and we're doing tons of stuff. But me personally, I found it, it's a drain for me. I find that it's another distraction. I cannot be on it. Uh, you want to like me on or friend me or whatever on Facebook, I don't be disappointed when I don't respond because I'm just not on. And if you see a post, it's usually because it's my team posting something on my behalf just to keep me alive on social media. But I have found it to be a distraction. I also found that I am watching less and less of the news because I cannot be plagued with all the negative stuff happening out there. I feel like it's eating at me. Um, I feel like it's important enough, I'll read it on my news feed in the morning. So using technology is probably a good thing. Now. There's a lot of apps that are very motivational. I listen to business podcasts like this to give me the motivation to get through and do better. So I really, when I walk and stuff, I love to listen to podcasts. Um, I do I do try these meditation apps. Now I'm trying to do some of that just to feel healthier. Um, you know, putting some good music on in the background, just helping me. But it is a very personal thing. Some people find a tremendous amount of pleasure in um, some very positive social media uh, platforms. But um, I, it's just not a personal thing for me. I find it a distraction. Yeah, it can be, and it can be a time suck, man. It can be, it can be, a, it can bring negativity on because there's always this sort of, I, there's a lot of false veneers out there on social media, right? And so you can fall into that trap of judgment and sort of the Joneses keeping up kind of concept. And then there's also, man, you can get sucked into it. And before you know it, you've blown an hour or two. I hear that all the time. And, and boy, does that add to your stress, right? Because where the heck did that time go? And you're not getting it back and you've been like this and, so I think it, I, I, I tend to agree. I use it mainly for business. I do a little, but it, it can be very distracting. So I also suggest people set timers. If you find yourself or completely disconnect a couple of days ago, I just went off. I just deactivated my Facebook account for a little while just to stop getting the updates. I turned the updates off on my phone. So I don't get them unless I actively go into the app. So I'm not constantly pinged, which is, which is a great, uh, for me, a great idea. Um, oh my gosh, so many questions. Um, so how can women overcome guilt when they do make decisions that work for them if it's at the expense of something else? God, we love our guilt, don't we? <laughs> we hate it, um, but we believe it. You know, I get get over the guilt. Get over it. I, I mean, guilt is a self-imposed feeling, right? It's because you feel like you could have done something better or for somebody, um, but you have to process is, is that, is that that what I made that decision for for because it's going to serve me better. And right now, I have to tell you, if you don't take care of you and focus on what because 
you know what? No one is going to share in your stress when you don't make your numbers. And no one is going to share in your stress when you, when you are so disappointed that you didn't get that, you know, you listing or you didn't get, like, no one's going to share in that. So the guilt of, well, I couldn't help them. I couldn't do the carpool. I couldn't, I couldn't help them with that project. I turned this other realtor down to do a co thing or a co event, you know, um, you got to get over it because you got to focus on what's going to make you right now the most successful, healthiest, happiest person, because no one is going to cry with you when things are not going right. You see where I'm going? So the guilt has got to kind of go away. I love that. Remember who's <laughs> going to be there and, and suffering from the choice to not give something up or not yeah. say no. You're yeah. going to be, you know, you and your family or you by yourself and that other person will be happy because they got whatever they needed done. Right. Okay. And, and you didn't. And that's, um, that's not selfish. It, it sound it may feel to some, you've got to shift that mindset. Right. But what's wrong with being a little bit selfish when it drives your success? Don't do it to the harm of other people or in a negative way, but put yourself first and your business first. I, I just think that's fantastic. Um, how can we effectively share this message um, other than replaying our, uh, our this, which is recorded and you can replay it, to those that people love who easily dismiss the importance of self-care? How, how do you think women can help frame or men that message to people who sort of scoff at it? This is a one act play. Your life is a one act play. That's it. You only got this one time, this one go around. And if you don't focus on, you know, a peak performance, you'll never get that day back. You have to think of every day as a gift. I'm spiritual, a gift from God. If at the end of the day, I haven't played that day to the best of my ability and um, I've given up a gift, Okay, I've turned my back on a gift that I got that day. So you need to really start thinking about um, time, right? We have such a limited amount of time in the scheme of things that it's precious. And if people are, you know, scuffing at the importance of me time wellness and just prioritizing, it's their loss, not yours. I love that. It gave me chills a little bit because we, we do only get one go around, right? And uh, we all want to make the best of it. And, and we should be putting ourselves and, and those that we care about first um, and finding what brings us joy and brings us success. I mean, I, I know, if, if as you mentioned before, women and men that are taking the time to listen to this are investing in themselves. I'm such a believer in, in investing that time. And I've had so many people tell me that they love this hour right throughout the month because it forces them to sort of focus just on them. And, you know, I, I encourage people to think about how that feels after and then carry it forward the next time you're, you're, you're cautioned, but maybe somebody will remember this right conversation when they want to say, when they sit, feel pressured to say yes, when they want to say no or, or go left when they want to go right and really make the decision that's best for them. Man, we spend a lot of time teaching our kids that lesson, right? We should, uh, we should carry it forward as, exactly. as adults. Um, you know, it's interesting. I spend, I've started meditating and I've started one of the, one of the apps that I use now is the insight is insight timer. Yeah. And I'll just share it with you. And I love it because it's what puts me to sleep. It's the only way I can turn my mind off. My husband jokes that every night, we have a, like a thunderstorm or a rainstorm going on in our, in our room because it's specifically water sounds. But my daughter uses it. And there's a lot of questions. I, I have a nine-year-old and she listens to it. They have a kid's version um, within there to help children as well. And our kids are going through a lot right now. Our kids, um, parents, elderly parents as well, you know, who can't see each other. I mean, I have, it, oh. there's a lot going on. Um, one of the questions I thought was interesting, and maybe we'll wrap on this. I, I'd love to get you to talk about the Women's Choice Award for five minutes, but we're running out of time. But do you, how can how can we as a community help each other as it relates to the one of the women asked or one of the people asked, I don't know if it was a woman or not, you know, how can I help? I don't have kids. How can I be a source of support or help within this time to working parents or whatnot? I mean, I'm bringing extra kids into my house because we're going to be homeschooling and I have two friends that have to work out of the office. So it's the village right now, right? But 
I think kids need a lot of help and, and adult, all of us need support. Any, any ideas? I mean, I just love the idea. Just call somebody and say, how can I help? Right. If nothing yeah. else. Yeah. You said it takes a village, but you know what? Um, this is a time when reaching out actually feels really good. So you don't see a lot of people, but you can volunteer and you can get involved in like, you could reach out to the schools and say a lot of working mothers right now have kids that are struggling. Like, what do you do? How can I help that parent? Because they know who these parents are. You know what I mean? Um, you know, maybe there's a way you could do an afternoon, even a virtual session. How could you help that child through the day when their mom is working or their dad's working in their home alone? Um, there is there is a lot. I think it's a matter of reaching out. Reach out to the libraries. Reach out to the elderly. I mean, right now they are so alienated just to take a meal and you wear your mask and your gloves and you sit there six feet apart and just let them see somebody because their family can't fly in from around the country to even visit them. So there are ways you could reach out and touch somebody's lives. I think it's it's a powerful way of also energizing yourself because when you do good for others, it just seems the universe just brings it right back to you. It sure does. And man, if, if realtors are not um, one of the most giving groups of yeah. um, people in the, the world and, and the country, um, I don't know who is. We've seen that time and time again throughout this pandemic, giving back to the communities, giving yeah. back to the schools. And um, I love that reaching out and offering your time. What are you good at? What's something you could offer? You know, I did joke that any kids that come here will be um, fed and uh, taken care of, but I don't know if they're going to learn their fourth grade math, but you know, it's okay, I'll be alive. Uh, the, bar, the bar has been reset, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> I just, yes. uh, just give you the closeout minute. I, I do um, want to thank you so much. Where can people find more information about the Women's Choice Award? Well, womenschoiceaward.com, please join us. You know, there's a join us tab where your voice matters and your voice can count because we're empowering each other. So please sign up and join us. We do research uh, two, three times a month. So your voice will be able to help other women make the right choices when it comes to products and services. Um, on womencertified.com, you can get to know us as a corporation, what we do. We do a lot of really cool things. But remember, we are, we are women helping women make smart choices. And you earned, Cobble Banker earned the Women's Choice Award. Women bestow that honor on you so definitely leverage it in your marketing because today it's validation actually McKinsey and company came out with an amazing study just yesterday that showed that consumers want a trusted brand they are leaning toward trusted brands in this time of uncertainty and the more validation you give your brand like for call a banker leveraging the women's choice award you're taking risk out of the decision and it makes it easy for consumers to feel confident so definitely use it on your social media and your marketing on your tools and your promotion um it will serve you well that's wonderful thank you so much for being with us again Thank you for sharing such uh, wonderful insights and advice and real practical um, things we can do every single day and, and reminding us all that it's up to us. We have to put ourselves first. We have to prioritize us and we will reap the fruits of that in our business and our relationships. So thank you so, so, so much. I always enjoy speaking with you. Well, thank you and be your own advocate. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and a very successful year. Thank you. And guys, I am so excited to let you know that next month, our Portraits of What Move Her Moves Her will actually be live at Gen Blue. So live virtually. Um, and it will be on Wednesday, uh, September 17th. And we are going to have a special speaker that will be presenting to us, and it will be Summer Sanders, a uh, Thursday, September 17th. Yes, thank you. I'm getting my little cue back here. Um, and I think we have a graphic that we four to 5.30 Eastern time, Summer Sanders, two-time Olympic gold medalist in swimming, which is amazing. I was a swimmer, but nowhere near that good. Um, and I'm really excited to have her share with us 
on the power behind the pivot. We have all had to pivot this year, but not just this year. In order to be successful, we always have to be able to pivot, to show agility and innovation in order to move ourselves forward. So I look forward to her speaking with us and continuing the conversation at our virtual Gen Blue. Thank you.